In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michel spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this if day, you like our content, no please hit the subscribe button. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling, and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material," said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, Please give us one like the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet, the question is… If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button. In the Museum of the Unexplained in Reed Spring, Missouri, a rather peculiar artifact can be found. Known as the Bob White Artifact. Bob was driving with a friend down a Colorado highway one night in 1985, when they would both experience a close encounter. As the craft flew over Bob's head, according to Bob, it dropped him a gift, an object which has caused Bob numerous issues. Quote, I don't know about you, but as for me, every time I hear people from Skeptic Magazine lying through their teeth, it makes me sick. They say they have never seen any hard evidence of UFOs. This is only true because they refuse to look at this, a piece of a UFO. So the next time you see the skeptic magazine people on Larry King or some other TV program saying there is no physical evidence, you will know they are lying. I have challenged them to debate me, but they are afraid. So skeptic magazine, you have been exposed for the fraud that you are. That was a statement made by Bob White in the late 90s. He further claimed that in 1996, he was flown to the classified Los Alamos National Laboratory for a detailed analysis like of his content, evidence. Please hit the subscribe White was button. told by senior staff that the object he recovered was indeed of extraterrestrial origin, also confessing to have successfully collected another object similar to his before. Although the officials fervently denied these claims, in 2000, Bob managed to acquire U.S. Army documents dating from the 1940s titled UFOs in Denmark. In it were multiple images of an object nearly identical to the one he had. When Dr. Rudolf Olson of Carolina examined the artifact, he concluded, quote, To describe the Bob White object in the simplest possible way, 
I think you can say please give us one like of rapidly cooled droplets or particles of an aluminum silicon alloy. With such an unusual structure, I can only speculate on how it was formed. It turns out that this artifact was free-formed, or more precisely, it was somehow cast in a zero-g environment without the use of a mold. It has been to over 15 labs and universities over the past 21 years, including Los Alamos, Sally, New Mexico, etc. If the artifact had been on a machine or a grinder of some sort, there would inevitably have been forensic evidence left upon the artifact. All we know is that it was in a molten state when ejected into a vacuum under extreme pressure within extremely cold conditions. Although Bob White's artifact rarely gains any attention anymore, it is clearly a most compelling piece of evidence in support of the possibility of alien visitation. Hey guys! Hope you guys will enjoy my YouTube videos. Make sure you subscribe and share my videos.